I feel like if I light this little plastic stick on fire, I could just melt it and a little drip over the tiny hole and it'll repair it. Uh, no. Hello lovers and welcome back to Travel Snacks. Today I'm going to be talking about how to comfortably sleep in your car. Not an SUV, not a van, not an RV, a plain old regular sedan and to sleep in it comfortably. At first I thought that I could just let half of my back seat down, lay through there and let my feet go into the trunk, but that didn't work because there was not enough room for my hips. So if I turned from side to side, it was just really constricting. Plus you're losing half of your trunk. And when you're traveling for a long time, you need as much storage as you can. So that idea got blown out of the water real quick. The second method and the one I love the most is that I bought a specific air mattress for my car back seat. I got it from Amazon and it's from a company called FB Sport and it's nice. It was $30, so not bad. And it comes with its own pump and it's great. So the way that I comfortably sleep on the air mattress in the back seat, there's a few tips. Now I am five foot seven, so I'm a little bit taller and so I don't fit all the way across the seat. My legs bend when I'm in the back seat. So if you're maybe five, I'm just making this up, five, 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 four, five, two, you would have no problem, it'd be so comfortable. But I'm five, seven, so I had to figure out a couple ways to make it more comfortable. The first thing is bedding. Now, if you have your seats all the way back, then it's gonna squish the mattress in and it's gonna push the mattress up your back seat and you don't want that. So what you have to do when you go to bed is push your seats all the way forward. Once you do that, then the mattress back kind of goes down because I have contoured seats. So what I do, which is also a great storage feature, is I take a few of my household towels, my shower towels, and I line them underneath the back so that it kind of props it up a little bit more to make it an even mattress. So that works out well. Then I put on a fitted sheet, which you can't really fit it because it has feet on the bottom but you just kind of tuck it in, put on a regular sheet, and then you put on like a nice soft blanket. That's for heat retention. Now I was gonna bring a sleeping bag, but putting my feet in a sleeping bag and trying to kind of like maneuver and switch, I didn't like being constricted in the Caterpillar bag. So I just, I abandoned that. So what I've done is I brought my huge white comforter, which I'll get to in a second. But after I put my nice blanket on, I put my pillow down with my silk pillowcase and silk pillowcases are really good for your hair and skin. It's really soft and I hesitated getting one before, but my friend told me about it and once I started using it, I love it. I also have my little tiny pillow that was my Nana's and I just bring it because you never know when you need a little extra cushion here or there. It's come in handy to just like prop up my head. You know, sometimes when you're in an awkward, posi awkward position, your arm is just kind of raised and you just need a little, a little something just to balance out your arm. Or I've also used this little pillow when there's a bright lamp on the street and you just kind of maneuver it and you're able to cover up that light so it doesn't glare into your eye. So I can easily lay in the back seat on my mattress with my legs bent. That's no problem. I can move from side to side and it works well. But if I want to stretch out, which you definitely need to do when you're cramped up in a car all the time, the thing that I figured out is that if I lean my front driver's seat forward all the way, then there's a little pocket of space that I can put my legs out diagonally. And with my pillow, I kind of prop it up as far into the corner as possible because it makes a big difference. If you're a little taller, you're gonna need to kind of lay at a diagonal because you're gonna put your head all the way in the corner on one side and then your feet all the way in the corner of the other side with your toes hooked around the front driver's seat chair. This allows you to lay straight, which is super important to stretch out at times, especially because you're gonna be in your car a lot. Then I pile on my big, huge queen size comforter. And even though it's really bulky, it's super warm and it's really cushiony. So you can kind of position it behind your back or under your stomach or whatever. And it's definitely worth the extra space that it takes up. 
This air mattress is super comfortable. It doesn't deflate that much. I mean, it might go down in air a little bit throughout the day as you're driving, but you can easily just blow it up with your mouth. It comes with a pump that you plug into your car lighter so you can easily just fill it up quickly. But if you just need to kind of do a little touch up, there's a little spout that you can just blow into and just fill it up a little bit more. And that's totally easy to do, but you always wanna do that before it gets dark and do it in a public parking spot so you're not just like out in the middle of nowhere and just out trying to blow up your mattress. That method was working perfectly until I went to Canada and I was detained at the Canadian border and they searched my car. I find it curious that within 30 minutes to an hour after I left the border patrol and I went into Canada that there was a slow leak in my mattress. So I'm not saying that, that anyone at the border was malicious, but also maybe they were careless. I don't know. I think Canada owes me $30. Once I noticed that there was a slow leak, I was like, okay, I'll just blow it back up but it just kept deflating faster and faster. So I was like, shoot, I need to figure out a way to patch this hole. So I tried three solutions and none of them worked. I tried using the bicycle patch repair kit from Walmart and that worked for about a day or two and then it didn't. So then I was like, okay, uh, I'll try using duct tape because a couple people recommended that. And when I put that on, it seemed to hold for a little bit and then like the whole strip just like started to puff out. It made the edges of the tape come off. So I was like, that sucks. I just wasted $4. The next thing I tried is the patch kit that came with the mattress, which I didn't try in the beginning because it comes with a circle patch, but then it comes with this like little wax looking stick thing. So I'm like, what is this for? Like, I don't, I don't understand what this is. It doesn't have any instructions with it. So I was like, okay, maybe you melt this on as like an adhesive and then you stick this on. So I gave that a try. And as you can see, it melted the stick, but it didn't quite drip on as an adhesive. And I ended up burning a bigger hole into the mattress. But I'm like, yo, could you just like include some instructions? Now I'm on my final solution. I decided to go to Walmart and buy this Loctite vinyl flexible adhesive. And I really hope this works. It looks terrible. And it's got like a big hole. You can see the inside of it now. <gasps> it's squirting out. This is a mess. I'm going to use one of these patches that it came with. It doesn't seem very sturdy. I'm going to place a very heavy object on here and let it sit for a couple hours. If you like sleep as much as I do, give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe and hit the notification bell. After the first one didn't work, I went on Amazon and I ordered another one and I had it sent to an Amazon locker and it wasn't going to get there for four days. So the first two nights, I slept on my back seat and those were by far the worst sleeping nights ever. My car back seat is contoured. So even with a bunch of blankets and stuff, it was just terrible on my back. And so after two nights of that, I'm like, okay, I need another solution. So I decided to try out this second method, which is sleeping in my car front passenger seat. Now, even though my car is awesome, I love it. I got nice leather seats, it's, everything is electric, it's great, but there is one drawback. The seat back doesn't go all the way level when you put it down. It's kind of at an angle, which is not great for sleeping. It's also pretty wide, but I mean, it's not a bed, so it's definitely not going to be as comfortable as laying on a mattress in your back seat. Now moving to the front seat is a chore. So if you know for sure that you're not going to be sleeping in the back seat, start early in making your front seat pallet because you gotta move everything from the back seat to the front seat, you gotta lay it out nicely. You don't wanna do it when it's dark. You don't wanna do it around a lot of people because you're trying to be stealthy out here. So it's best to do it 
as soon as you know you're not going to stay in the back seat, start making your pallet and you'll be ready when it's bedtime. You might be tempted to just throw a bunch of blankets on the front seat and just lay down and go to sleep, but don't do that. I'm telling you because in the middle of the night, it's gonna be like uneven surfaces and you're gonna be like, ugh. So you're gonna wanna try to make it as comfortable as possible. I bring extra blankets with me whenever I travel. So the first thing I do is I lay a big fluffy pillow on the seat to try to level it out a little bit more because you don't want your back to be dipping down. That's a terrible, terrible night's sleep. Once I put the pillow down, I filter in some extra blankets on the side and above the pillow. And then I just make the bed like I normally would with the mattress. So I hook the fitted sheet over the headrest and then I put the regular sheet and then I put my blanket. So it's kind of like a pallet of blankets. Then I have my little Nana pillow and I put it to wherever my hip is gonna be hitting something like the armrest or the side of the door. If you lay down just with all the blanket padding, it's okay but then your legs are gonna be kind of bent and that is not a comfortable sleep for eight hours. The air mattress comes with two inflatable pillows. So what I did is I blew up both of those pillows and put them where my feet are so I can have a little elevation and lay my feet on those pillows. It's not perfect because they kind of fall over in the middle of the night, but I mean, you just do the best you can. Also, because I have such a huge comforter, I kind of wrap myself in the blanket and push the rest of the comforter material underneath the back of my calves and between having the blow pillows and the big comforter it works pretty well so i can lay pretty straight in the front seat now of course if you want to turn side to side it's going to be okay but it's definitely not going to be luxurious however with with the right amount of padding it's not a bad night's sleep but after doing that for two nights i was so excited to finally go and get my new air mattress from an amazon locker if you're taller what Am I an angel? <laughs> what is this? If you're taller than 5'7", you are gonna probably have a little bit more of a harder time fitting in the back seat. You can always lay one of the front seats all the way back and then lay your legs over it, but you're gonna also be having your legs elevated all night and that's not gonna be super comfortable. But you gotta do what you gotta do. When you're traveling, you just have to try to experiment and find the best ways, the best positions for you to sleep because getting a good night's sleep when you're on the road is imperative. If you don't get a good night's sleep, you're gonna be cranky, you're gonna be tired, and it's not a good idea to be driving tired on the road. 